and Viper Agzo just coming off of a six stock to enter the top four. So Viper, you know, he's like, all right, I'm gonna stick to this Surrey. You know, I mean, you were giving him giving him a little, you know, a little bit. It of did amazing. Surrey, it did amazing. Saying. Oh, what? <laughs> what? Blaze. It's now amazing. we see why he picked this Sidra. It's not a kill. <laughs> I, I gotta say, big props to Agzo for like keeping his resources through all of that and making sure he didn't die a very early death. That could have been huge yeah. for the red team. Agzo able to stay alive. Nice side sick from Viper. We saw a few of those in that last game, but uh, he's gotten the kill onto Agno very early on. And that was great. Agzo locked him in there with that neutral light and Viper was ready. And that, again, that's the teamwork we see from these two. A, a fantastic... I mean, they're they're land champions in their own right, and they're showing it right now. Just, I mean, I mean, they're cleaning up the stocks. Akno hasn't had that much success with the orb so far. Oh, the neutral sig. <laughs> okay, Viper. okay. Well, I mean, I I think it's really interesting. Viper hit that neutral sig, and instead of going down and trying to like, oh, I'm gonna save you, Axo, because he didn't need saving. He just quickly, immediately started hitting Blaze and Akno, and said, "I'll distract them. You can just get back on stage. Everything's fine." Yeah, and that's, that's a little underrated thing about saving your teammate, is you don't always need to hit them, but you definitely need to get the opponents off of them so they can't guarantee the kill. Because in 2v2, there's two people taking away your options, guaranteed kills are way, way more common, especially off stage. so it's the kind of teamwork that you like to see Viper and Exit. Viper in deep dark red, got hit by one weapon throw, low stage, and immediately wasn't able to come back from the Agno tries to punish Agzo, and instead, the classic hammer recovery going the way of Agzo, continuing to make good work of that. And uh, Agno down on last stock here, pretty uh, pretty bad for the red team, but I feel like Blaze has been, has been doing really good work so far. Yeah, it, it seems like Akno has kind of just been getting smacked up by these guitars from Viper, which is sort of what I was talking about in the last set that Akno played against. I don't remember exactly who picked those guitars, but I do think that this Ooh. matchup is very favorable. Wow! Especially when you get that GC <laughs> neutral sig. The tip of the hitbox! The map there. And on top of that, challenging the orb dare, which is, I feel, a move that a lot of players have been struggling a lot with lately, trying to figure out what to do against Orb Dare offstage. Viper says, oh. I'll just gravity cancel <laughs> neutral sig. I'll gravity cancel down sig out of hit stun against him. Does get hit by that ground pound, but I mean, blue team has put so much damage down on Blaze. They're feeling good. There's a ground pound. And Agzo and Viper take game one and say, we're not afraid of whatever random stuff Akno and Blaze throw at us. We are tried and true. If I'm being, if I'm being completely honest. I think that last situation where Viper was underneath Blaze and did a dodge into the wall. I'm pretty sure he was looking for like a GC neutral sig or something like that, and he realized that Blaze was above. So if he did it, he'd get hit. And so we panic dodged into the wall. But I, I definitely think that Viper was stunned on them after he got that GC neutral sig. He's like, all right, well, we won this game. I'll, I'll do a, a GC unarmed down sig out of hit stun. Why not? And it worked out. <laughs> and for the first time that we've seen them, Akno has switched legends off of fate to Shinsekai Kazuma. That's huge. That's actually so huge. Now, is it huge for so red confident. team or is it huge for blue team? Like, no, I mean, it, it's just like a huge statement that Akno, like, I mean, they did lose a game earlier on in the tournament. And, and he felt yeah. confident about the fate. And Akno was still chilling on that fate. I mean, Akno was like kind of got slapped up in that game as well, and he still stayed on the fate. So the fact that after one game, Akno's switching up, I think that's very, very telling and, and, and how good Viper and Axo are. And I think there's a difference there between that first game where Akno probably thought, man, my fate, uh, you know, I, I wasn't playing so well against them versus this game where it was the fate isn't playing so well against them. And there is that key difference that you gotta recognize, and I think Axo trying to recognize it here, but Viper ground pounds and side airs coming out from his guitars. The only thing he's recognizing is opportunities to get rid of red team and take yeah. those stocks real early. Viper's kind of saying like, you know what, F I don't think fate's the problem, I think I'm the problem, and he's definitely cleaning up that stock, just... Whew. And Agzo, oh, I think really wanted the double <laughs> side air for the early kill. Agzo's I think Asuri gone! might be the pick, you know? <laughs> Asuri is absolutely, man, finally loses his first stock. But so much damage done. Multiple kills going the way of Viper. They finally get rid of Agzo too. But again, Agno on his last stock. Blaze haven't taken so much damage. Whereas the blue team are just chilling pretty. Finally, only just now getting into their second stocks. <laughs> if I'm red team right now, 
I need an answer to Viper's guitars. I think that's the thing that has been just plaguing them throughout these You know two the games. scary I part? One and a half games. Like, Even if they find an answer to Viper's guitars, he's gonna come back next game and play Axe. Like, I you, you just saw him do great work with a different legend, and now you're dealing with this one. Agno falls to Axo's. Uh, fantastic edge guards. Blaze is gonna get that dare on that Viper, but even then, it's still not enough. And blue team looking at a nice uh, 2v1 up against Blaze. You know, he took out Viper, but again, the trade from Axo is all they need. Just trade evenly, and you're looking good. I love that nair coming out from Axo. So Blaze just hit a side sig, which means he gets a chase dodge, he gets some invuln. And so Axo, instead of going for the punish, which probably would have missed because of Blaze's invuln, he waits. Waits for Blaze to go up and follows up with that Nair. That was excellent confirming the kill from Agzo. Yeah, for all that we were praising Viper, Agzo's still on his second stock. He cleaned up that kill on Blaze. He cleaned up that kill on Akno. I mean, this is just a... It's it's a team. There's nothing else I can say about Agzo and Viper. They're a solid, solid team. And you gotta get past this wall. I mean, if you find an answer, like you said, if you find an answer to Viper's guitars, he pulls out the axe, but you kind of need to do that. It's like level two of a boss. You just gotta, you gotta get past the first phase before you can beat the second one. The problem is, if you're fighting a boss that has two levels, you know how long it takes to figure out how to get through the first level? Now you gotta get through the second level. This isn't an MMO. They don't have the time for that. This is a best of five set. So if they're going to figure out how to do it next game, they only have so much time to figure out the next one. So Ags and Viper, they have a plan here, and they're going to feel strong moving on through this plan in this best of five set up against Blaze and Akno as they try to finish off this last talk from Blaze here, looking for the kill, trying to get around this axe that just continues to put out as many hitboxes as possible in an attempt to stay alive. The recovery, the weapon throws, the ground pound. That's gonna do it. And Blaze is gonna fall. It seemed like he was delaying the inevitable there. The the lead that Viper and Axo had, not just the lead, but the control of the stage that they had was so, so much more than, than Blaze could like deal with there. I mean, the Qatar down sig covered the lip and then Axo with that huge hammer hitbox, it was looking grim from the get-go in that 2v1 and then Axo and Viper clean it up once again. So what's Akno gonna pick? That I don't think he's gonna pick Koji again. I think <laughs> I think that Koji was a lost cause, maybe a little bit of a panic pick or something like that. Uh, maybe thinking, back to the fate. No, he's going Ragnar. Ragnar. He's got a level forty-four Ragnar, so that's that is some time put into it. But oh, true, true. I mean, whew. Blaze is sticking with the Brin here. In comparison to, to to the last game, not to the first game. Agno decides he doesn't want to do it. Agno decides. From, Agno from decides. Like. Who knows what he's gonna decide? All right, Mordex. Mordex, Mordex is the pick. With the the deck stance. So, mm. I think in the first game we mostly saw Agno's orb, and we didn't get to see a lot of his scythe, and the orb wasn't working. So maybe the scythe is gonna work, and I have no idea what Agno's gauntlets look like. I will say I don't. I'm not a fan of the of the deck stance. The deck, yeah, the deck stance on Mordex it takes away from speed. I think speed is the single most important stat for Scythe, because when you're bringing these players off stage, you can bring them that much more, that much further if you're using, if, if you got that high movement speed and you're using all your movement correctly. But maybe he just wants to attack a little faster. You know, Mordex. He needs. It's the classic joke. I'm not gonna say it, but you know, he needs. <laughs> You know everyone's yes. thinking about it. Yeah. On the other side though, Akno, double Nair. Ooh, really good save from Viper. Nared Akno and then followed up to save Agzo. But Akno's got more Nairs. Oh. Nairs for days. He goes a little bit too deep. Viper's there for the punish. I think Akno's dead, yeah. Yeah. So he caught the dodge from Agzo and then just didn't commit with the ground pound. He did it like just a little bit too late. He hesitated and because of that, Ag Agzo is living on this first dock and Akno's the one to fall. I think that's a huge moment for the red team. Like, I could have maybe turned around the set, but instead, it's looking like the same story. I do think, however, that Akno being able to at least put Agzo in that much pressure, that's that's pretty important. Like, that's a performance we haven't seen from Akno in this set so far. So this Mordex looking like the pick. If they can win this game, I would expect Agno to keep up this Mordex for the entirety of the set. And Viper dodges in, he's got nothing, oh, he's got nothing this but recovery, but Akno misses, he picks it up beautiful. anyway with the scythe recovery. This should be a guaranteed edge guard. no, he drops off. 
It, it Ag seems like Agzo Agzo at least been... put his presence there. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Axo did. Uh, Axo did put the fear in, but it seems like Akno, he's doing all the hard work. He's getting them into the guaranteed edge guard scenario, and then he's just dropping it at the last moment. And that's the kind of cleanup that you really, really need to have in order to get the win. Now Akno looking for more scythe hits. He isn't able to find it there, but I mean, you look at these stocks, and this is without a doubt the closest game we've seen so far between these two. Akno's yeah, Mordex is the story here in this game number three. It Always seems like Viper has been unarmed for the majority the of the game, and Akno's been cornering him. Gets a ground Gets the guaranteed. Down Viper, is he gonna Blaze? go around? No, we can't go around. Yeah, that was so oh good God. from, from Blaze and Akno. Blaze had the, had the kill, he had the guaranteed, so Viper's like, okay, I'm gonna go around. And then Akno goes around to the other side, which Viper's like, oh no, now I can't go there. And Viper panics, he gets, you know, bump, bonks his head a little bit, and now it's a 2v1. I think it's interesting, very, very Akno, well like, stayed on stage for that entire thing. Even watching Blaze get hit by hammer side airs, he waited, he was patient, and now that he got Agzo off and used up all his resources, he's gonna let Blaze take it again. We see Akno, he's on the one stock and Blaze is on two, so Blaze was the one aggressing there. Even though they didn't confirm the kill, they got a lot of damage off that edge guard, which, you know, in a 2v1, it's pretty big, because if you get one of those hits, you get one of those good, <laughs> those downlines that he's looking for, you can get a team combo, you can confirm the kill. He sent him forward and sent Instead of sending them back to Blaze, Ooh. which is a little interesting. But. He actually caught Akno out of his recovery. Akno's response was an immediate exhausted recovery. Yeah, Almost that was got a him killed. Scary. But... I mean, this is definitely Akno and Blaze's game to lose. They gotta confirm this kill if they wanna stay alive in the tournament. And Agzo is. He's getting his hits in, and that's what he needs. He's sort of patrolling that corner, getting back to center stage. He okay. catches the dodge. That was really well played from Akno. Good awareness of the dodge habits from Agzo and Viper, and uh, like you said, immediately staying on the Mordex. I think the kicker in that game was that Viper was kept unarmed for so long, and Akno was able to run free off stage. Well played from the red team. So let's see what the map ends up being. I think they're going to leave open a probably Mammoth, Twilight, and Miami. If I'm if, if my predictions are, are true. Okay, Your well, predictions was, are not true I was, today. I was two for three. Agzo and Viper sticking with their legend picks. Viper did not switch off the Asuri to uh, to a previous legend. We'll see how that goes for them. Maybe they got a plan in mind against Agno's Mordex, but right now, that is the legend to watch. Really good stuff coming out from both the Scythe and the Gauntlets on Akno's side. We'll see if he's able to start taking this momentum that he's gotten and use it for the duration of the set. And I don't think Viper's Asuri was the problem. Like, either the Katara's I do or agree. the sword. But, like, it seemed like he just wasn't able to get any control or, or and weapons for a lot of the majority of the game. But at the same time, even though he has a sword right now, he hasn't really seemed to be getting anything. And Akno is running away with the damage leads. And it's the same story from the last game. Viper and Axe have got to get their head back in the game and maintain that control that they had from the first two games. Otherwise, Akno and, and Blaze might end up taking this. All right, Akno going a little too ham with that GC down sig and Axe clean up the hammer recovery. You don't really want to be above hammer when they're off stage. That recovery is very, very scary. And that's, I mean, <laughs> that's the reason right there. And a really well-placed recovery too from Axo. He was in the magnifying glass. That was, that is not trivial to connect. Yeah, it was very precise. Especially since the, the Scythe downstick moves your hurt box as well. So Axo, well-placed recovery. Ooh, he tries to air. get it again, but Ag Akno is ready. Wait, Axo. I don't know how many, I don't know how you've been <laughs> saying that cleanly this whole time. Agno, Axo, why? what? Why do they do this to us, Creed? They, they gotta make it as difficult as possible. But right now, red team is making it very difficult for blue team. Blaze is still in his first stock. We've talked a lot about Akno throughout this set. But Blaze right now, he's really like keeping it together for the red team. Akno is going to do a lot of damage and make a lot of kills. But if Blaze can just continue to stay alive, that is going to be a thorn in the blue team's side. I think that's what we were talking about in the last game that they played on Small Enigma as well, is that Akno was popping off on the fate, and Blaze was just staying alive. I think he had three stocks at the end of that last game. So that's definitely the team dynamic, is Akno kind of goes ham, and then Blaze is the stock tank, putting on pressure, getting some damage here and there, but uh, letting Akno run free. Mm, good ground pump from Blaze, good down sig. 
Blaze is going to be looking for a way to finish off Axel here, but he's going to be so careful. Axel has showed time and time again he can reverse edge guards very well. And Akno, I think, is definitely the, the key in this game. If he dies right here, then the blue team has such a huge... Oh, <laughs> look at the Whoa. DI! DI coming out from because of the double <laughs> side light. It wasn't enough DI to avoid the neutral sig, though. Nice side sig from Viper, and that is going to take out Akno. This is very doable for Blaze, but... I mean, it's still a 1v2, and it could be anyone's game right now. To be fair, though, I think, like, even though this is a 1v2, he has two healthy, well, not necessarily healthy, but he's not necessarily an immediate kill percent, unless he wastes all his options and then <laughs> <go> down sig. <laughs> but, <laughs> I was going to say he does have a lot of room to work with. This one stock isn't the end by any means. Agzo might be healthy, but Viper, Ooh, he gets one a weapon. good side sig, yeah, is what he's going to be looking for. <laughs> Agzo ready with the punish though, and suddenly the well, game that went off very stage. doable is looking a lot more grim. After that uh that side sig whip from Viper, you could see Blaze searching for an opportunity, maybe a quick spear ground pound, but he couldn't find it. The pressure from Agzo, really well done. It kept Viper alive and kept it at a 1v2. And it seems like Blaze is definitely getting desperate to get these hits. Agzo was sort of just spacing out and running away with the damage lead as he tunnel visioned into Viper. Agzo was ready with all these hits, and that's the reason why Blaze has gotten all this damage. I'm not sure if Viper has gotten a single hit. I think Agzo pretty much just 1v1 that one. <laughs> Blaze was chasing out Viper, and that's why they take the set 3-1. Agzo and Viper looking so strong. They.